Hey guys, it's Wade here. I wanted to cover a new instrument that I have in my panel. I bought this a few months ago from Vlad. He's originally from Russia, I believe. Now he's in British Columbia, Canada. He built an RV-10 and he did an excellent job building essentially his whole entire panel with all the display units, the EFISs, and he built this little guy here. He does both a two and a quarter, which is the Mini Uni 2, Again, this is 360 avionics. And then he also does a Mini Uni 3, which is a 3 and 1 8 inch version. And then he does the larger display screens as well. And I'm just picking this up. It's a really a replacement for this guy right here. The MGL avionics. This is just a simple clock timer. It does have an OAT. The deal is with this is that it's 2 and a quarter, and you can mount it. You can see this little edge right here. You can mount it either behind the panel coming through the hole or you can mount it surface mounted. Apparently I had some headspace and timing issues. Thinking about this originally, you can see some little marks right here where I had it surface mounted where it kind of dug into the paint just a hair. But I wanted to have a clock timer that served as a clock timer, but then also had an EFIS capability backup. I just recently, in the last couple days, cut out the two and a quarter to allow this to fit in the original composite panel of the bird, which this aluminum panel overlays. Now I'm gonna turn this thing on. See the light blinking there. Now hopefully this camera shows it okay. I've been having some issues trying to film this just because my camera is, I don't know if it's the angle or the lighting or what, but or just my crappy phone camera I'm trying to get this thing to show you what's what. So it's saying AHARS is limited. It's checking the AHARS right now. It's booting up. And this is just a simple EFIS. Well, I say simple, but it's got GPS connected got a little puck right here. You can get this with pedo and static inputs in the back or without. I chose to get it with the pedo static. The only thing I don't have, which is an option, is the magnetometer. And this, since this is just a backup, I figured GPS track would be fine. Why I wanted this, again, was for the more of an attitude indicator type EFIS. I have this three and an eighth right here, which is just to the left of my large GRT HXR EFIS display unit in the middle of the panel. To the right, right now I have a TrueTrack ADI, which is just, again, that's just an attitude indicator. Full stop. It does give you GPS track and that's it. The deal is, since I have a the 8 inch GRT center EFIS, and then down off to the side of that, I have a Mini X GRT small EFIS. Now clearly with the larger EFIS, I'm able to split the screens and I have a lot of information there. And I also have a CDI and an HSI on that screen. Now if I lose that center screen and I'm having to work off of the smaller Mini X, now I've got some crowding issues. Plus, since my primary display is the, the larger screen that I'm typically going to be using, if I do lose it and I have the smaller screen, then I'm going to need some more information off to the side, outside of that little Mini X. And so what I wanted was the backup EFIS here, just so I can keep the dirty side of the plane down and keep it level. And then also up on the right side, opposite of this guy, I'll have another instrument that will essentially enunciate a CDI or an HSI give me, uh, if I need to do an instrument landing, it will enunciate whatever's coming out of the, the GNS480 GPS navigator. So, go around the circuit here on this thing. Hopefully it stays in focus. Down in this corner you have the ground speed and knots. You have the outside air temperature. Right now it's showing 20.2 Celsius. You can put that in Fahrenheit if you want. It does have an integrated AOT probe that comes with this unit. Here you have your airspeed and knots. There is a speed tape that will show up once you start moving. And it gives you your VY, your VX, VR, all those, whatever's 
whatever you program in there and it's got the little speed tape so it will show at one point if you're getting if you're uh reducing airspeed it'll start showing the red bar and you know and the and then the barber pole and all that kind of stuff to kind of give you a warning. Across the top, you have your mag headings, and then you've got your slip skid is down here. But up here, you have this arc, and you program at what point your airspeed comes alive and when you're actually quote-unquote flying. So let's say that's 40 knots. At 40 knots, you'll get these indicators, these green triangles off to each side that'll give you your standard rate turn then you have your ladder in the middle for the degrees above and below the horizon obviously you have your brown for the ground just like the traditional attitude indicator the blue for the sky your density altitude up in the corner here you have your altitude here in this box your regular altitude tapes right here you have your vertical speed and then down here you have your altimeter and then to change that Turn this one dial. Now the three inch version has one or two extra buttons off to one side or the other. This only has the one center dial slash button. And the button, if you hold it down for three seconds, you get into the screens to change all the parameters and configure it. If you want to just switch pages, which I'll do here in a second, you just simply tap it. I'll point out one thing before I go to the next screen. To do any firmware or software updates, there's a micro SD card right here. And also, you can set this Mini Uni 2 EFIS up to track your flights, and then you can download that to your computer or laptop, and then it'll display it in Google Earth. So that's kind of a neat feature if you want to do that. So I'm going to change the screen. Just press this once. This is the, this is the compass mode. My camera is really struggling to focus in on this screen, especially I guess it's just because it's basically the two colors. It's just very crisp and looks great in person. But, but at the top, you have your track. You can have that either in magnetic or true. The lower left in knots, you have your ground speed and the lower right have heading bug. And so it might blur it a little bit, but I'm gonna change the heading bug with the knob on the bottom. And you can see how that works right there. The next screen is your timer screen. As you can see, you have the UTC time, you have the local time, the flight time, again, at whatever you set it, rotation speed 40 or whatever speed you want. I shouldn't say rotation speed necessarily, but whatever speed you want, let's say that's 30 knots or 40 knots, that flight time will start. And then that timer on the bottom is a count up timer. So you press that, it just kicks off the timer. There's also a separate countdown timer which when it triggers, it'll tell you that it's time to switch tanks. And that will actually then see very visibly on this screen, which is again in the long easy where you're switching tanks is one reason why I thought this was a good fit. Then you just go through, you have your local time. It tracks the oil time for your oil changes, which is a nifty little feature. You've got a G meter, which come in handy, especially during the initial 40 hour fly off. You have altitude here, and again down in the corner. You know, you obviously, you have vertical speed on the left, down lower left, and then lower right. You have your altimeter. You know, these are just simple screens if you're focusing in on something or you're testing out. Uh, you know, the speed that this is capturing versus, say, the main display unit or something. Main bus voltage. And then back to here. This gives you a little bit closer view. The only, honestly, the only thing that I would want to see an immediate improvement on is just kind of the, the ball down here. I would like to see that a, a brighter color. Back to the main screen. It's not super bright or super colorful like a Garmin or a Dynon. Uh, you could probably say it's comparable to Grand Rapids, but it definitely gives you the information you need. And it's a stellar little unit. I've messed around with it for quite a bit. It always fires up. It uh, works as designed so far. I can't wait to see, see how it works flying in it. So that's it. This is the 360 Avionics Mini Uni 2 EFIS. And again, I'll be using it primarily as a timer uh, for switching tanks but uh, it's nice to know that this screen is here oh one thing I should mention the mini uni 3 has a an input where you can hook it up to an RS-232 out of your GPS navigator it'll give you a CDI screen that doesn't show here because the RS-232 is not hooked up the CDI screen will give you all your track information maybe not all of it but it'll give you a certain decent amount I'll just show you what's in the manual here see that 
So that would be the CDI screen. Now that's usually only on the 3 and an 8th. And then I really wanted this capability. So that's as far out as I can get it right now without messing up the camera. I talked to Vlad and he had been thinking about putting it in the two and a quarter inch version, the Mini Uni 2. And so I said I really wanted that capability. So when he constructed this unit for me, he put that in there. And uh, so now I can hook this unit up via RS-232 to the GNS-480 and get that CDI and get all the track information. But that's it. Wanted to show you this. Thanks for watching. Cheers.